And we're live. Good evening, everyone, and welcome uh, to our very late night program, Content Content. It's awesome. the Wednesday night, it late night. It feels extra show. late night, too, right? Because of the That's time true. change. That's because of the time everything. change. I've yet I'm to recover from up. that. I can barely stay up right now. <laughs> <laughs> Joining us this evening, the much anticipated episode we have with us tonight, Kyle Butler. Kyle, welcome to the show. Welcome to the show, Kyle. Hey, Man. thank you guys for having me. This is going to be fun. Kyle, of course, the uh, co-host of Graceline Show. Yes. Um, with, uh, his co-host is Lynn Bennett. And uh, I enjoy that yeah. show. I watch it. I watch it once in a while whenever it comes up on my feed. And I, I'm just going to big up Kyle right now because I, I found Kyle on Facebook. And he's got this, this crazy, uh, you know, apostate message, which is basically all, all about love. Yeah. And you know that's the that's the crazy message, you know. And man, I, I love your posts because they 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 make you think, uh, which is something that I was taught in, in my cult, you know, that thinking is evil. Uh, you know, literally, like someone once well, someone once rebuked me and, and like prayed over me like prophetically, like the devil's controlling your mind, and you know, uh, just because I was thinking. So. You know, I, I love to read your stuff. I love the, the focus on love, the focus on um, just thinking, you know, thinking about things, rethinking things, um, getting outside of the box, um, you know, and, and you guys have a great chemistry, too, on the Grace Line show. Uh, you know, you guys, how long are you guys knowing each other? Because there's some good chemistry there. Um, you know, probably, <clears throat> well, we were both still pastoring at the time, so... I, I, I would like to say maybe six years now we've known each other. Okay. Um, he found me through, uh, through a, a gentleman that um, my, I had a lot of ties with throughout my life, uh, Lynn Hiles. Okay. And um, so Lynn, Lynn asked Lynn, did he know of any, He Lynn was interested in, in finding some uh, African-American black preachers, pastors who were also teaching grace at the time. Because, okay. um, you know, in the black church, that's very rare. So Lynn Hiles, who has a big circle of influence and, you know, he's been in teaching grace for a long, long time. He, you know, gave him eight or nine different names. I was one of those names. So Lynn contacted a, us in a group and one thing led to another and we just became friends and um, now we're brothers and you know, we're probably uh, both going to hell together in most people's <laughs> eyes, but we're okay with that. Yeah, me, me and Derek are also <laughs> holding like, hands on the way there. That's right. Yeah, we'll but see right you there. You. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, it won't be all bad, right? Yeah, well, um, no. <laughs> so uh, before we get into it too deep, Kyle, let, I just want to jump back a little bit. Mm -hmm. And um, first question is like, what is your spiritual or religious background? Um, yeah. How did you, how did you grow up religious or not? And then kind of where are you at with things now? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. Yeah. I grew up uh, in church. Uh, Pentecostal holiness was a denomination we were part of. And uh, when I say holiness, I mean, holiness, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> we could yeah. not do anything, nothing. Really? Everything was a sin except church. And we did a hell of a lot of that. So that was my background. That was where I came up. Um, and I was in it for a long, long time, probably up to about 2000. By this time, I was pastoring in that same denomination. And, um, you know, I always wanted something more diverse, something more uh, non-traditional, something more uh, that was more inclusive. So I broke away from that and just started calling ourselves, you know, non-denominational. Um, because I didn't want to be tied to a certain name. And even though I didn't understand where I was going then, I just knew that there was something much bigger than that. And I didn't want to be held to that standard. So, you know, I broke out and started calling myself non-denominational and just, it's kind of evolved into eventually, well, when we ended, I was fully in the grace camp at that point. So I, I was, I would have got kicked out of that denomination anyway, at that point. So, <laughs> 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 yeah, it, you know that's so interesting. The, the the grace, you know how, you know, the way that the way that you describe it, you know, in that situation, you know, I mean, basically, you you sound like you you went to the same place I did almost, and um, yeah. 
the way you describe it is like grace is this like crazy, you know, the way, the way that we feel like the control might be crazy. Or when, when you say grace in, in that circle, it's like crazy. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. crazy. That idea of grace, that I get, the idea of just loving through everything right. and just forgetting about uh, the theology and the, and, and, you know, the transubstantiation and the, this and the, that, and the, you know, mm-hmm. Is it this? Is it that? You know, and that's so radical. It's un- it's unbelievable. Yeah. You know, this simple gospel, this pure stream of thought of simplicity, is mm-hmm. so is just as radical today as it was, you know, two thousand years ago, and yes. it's so still that way. What what is it about that grace that is so threatening to yeah, those other good. churches? Well, to a, to a traditional church, a a structure, um, most churches, most denominations, you know, most religions, you know, entirely, uh, well, most religions in general, everything's geared towards keeping you beholden to something. Um, their spiritual leader whoever that is, Jesus, Muhammad, whatever, whatever, you know, it wants to connect you to that and make you dependent on that. So as long as you stay here, you'll need this. And we're the ones that can, that can continue to give you this, the messages from this person, the inspiration from this person. So you need this. So, so on and so forth. Um, and in all those systems, and that's really what religion is, just a system and all those systems, it's, it's really designed to keep you beholden to something. And mostly it's based on performance and they will never tell you that you're doing enough or you've done enough. So grace to a system where something comes in and tells you, you don't have to do anything and you're totally free and there's no requirements here. You know, that system says that can't be because if you tell people that, if you give people that information, they won't need us anymore. And if they won't need, if they don't need us anymore, then we can't keep this system going. Um, and I, I realized that very early on. Now, I think that grace is a good starting point if you're coming out of a religiously controlled environment or very heavy performance environment. Grace is a good place to to land when you're breaking free and, and maybe just starting what some people call deconstruction or whatever. Grace is a good place to land because it, it it helps, it starts to free you from that entanglement and that required lot living, that, that feeling that you're required to do all these things. And it starts to give you some room to breathe. But, you, you know, I don't think we're, we were intended to stay there if we do land there because there's so much more beyond grace. But grace to the very fundamental church system, organization, foundation, whatever, it's very threatening because once again, it's all about setting you free from the system to some large degree. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that, something. that's something uh, Mike and I have talked about as well that um, like you said, well said that it, it is a system uh, and, and, you know, a hierarchical structure that, yeah. cause of course, you know, modern materialism does a similar thing. In that, you yeah. know, it tells you that if you don't have a nice car, if you don't use the right mm-hmm. toothpaste, then, you know, right. the, the answers to your inner problems are found outside of you. So you just need to work right. harder and acquire this thing. Right. When, of right. course, like you're saying, the great mystery or uh, <laughs> illusion is that uh, self-contentedness comes ex- exclusively from right. within. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah, it's interesting, too, that you say that like that's that's not necessarily the ultimate realization of self, I suppose right. uh, you would, you, if you can love yourself, then you can begin to lead a life of service and sort of mm-hmm. like, you know, spread that love and compassion, uh, outward. Um, yeah. but Mike, I, I feel like your story is somewhat similar. Do you, f- did, did the word grace to you like uh, resonate when you were coming out of your, uh, tightly religious experience experience? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I would say, I mean, that's probably why why I love uh, reading his posts and listening to Kyle so much is uh, I really can relate. And um, I think grace was the thing that 
as he said, I would say if anyone's watching right now and they're kind of in any situation like that, grace, just like Kyle said, is sort of the beginning. Once you realize the grace part, it starts to set you free. And it's the beginning point. And it's, you know, I used to listen to something uh, called Loving Grace Ministries with Wayne Monblau a lot. And that was excellent for like just liberating me from the system and kind of starting to think of Jesus in a new way. And, you know, it's interesting because Jesus, if, if you if you look at Jesus through that lens, which starts to make things make a lot of more sense to me, at least to me, if you look at him through that lens, it actually ends up being Jesus, at least in my case, who saved me from his followers. So it's it's actually, <laughs> you know, he he helped me get away from the people who followed. <laughs> so it's, but a, it's, 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 a strange it's funny because it's true, right, Kyle? That's why it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> the truth is always the funniest and uh so listen i'm i'm right there with you grace is front and center and then yeah then from there you can work it's kind of like yeah you 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 just got to the beginning of that road right. once you embrace right. grace and then you can start going inward like derek was saying in, in my point of view mm-hmm. like where because right. it's all and, and and i love what you said too is that you best basically I give you a lot of credit, Kyle, and I respect you a lot because you closed down your own business. You 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 came yeah. in and you knew when you had you found grace. You said, I can't grace is gonna put me out of business. But yeah. you saw yeah. it was so true that yeah. you couldn't keep doing it. So I, I and and that is very, you know, admirable and it shows that uh your your honor search for truth and you really had a good intention. Mm-hmm. Even when you were in that other situation, but yeah. you had to, it's almost like, you know, I look at my situation kind of like the devil that I needed because it pushed mm-hmm. me into the space I'm in now, which mm-hmm. I don't know if I could have gotten there without kind of that shake up, you know, mm-hmm. so what do you think? Yeah. What do you think of that, Kyle? Like of, of sort of <clears throat> these, these systems having a use for us to propel us into this inward search, like, you know, going, having to like become, uh, what is it? Ramdas is, uh, or I'm confusing it. Like, you know, to become nobody, you have, you have to yeah. first become somebody, right. something mm-hmm. like that. I know I butchered it, but it's mm-hmm. basically, you have to become somebody in quotes, the success, somebody before you can become the nobody, which is really the somebody. <laughs> if that, I'm, <laughs> I don't know which if is- you guys understood <laughs> that, but that's, that's what I'm trying to say here. What do you think of that? Well, I, you know, to be if I'm honest, I, I would have to say I'm kind of in between right now. Mm-hmm. I hear when people say that you needed this to get to where you are. And there's a part of me that says, yeah, I can see that. But then there's another the part of me that says, no, I didn't. You know, I didn't need to get shot in the head to find out that my surgeon was a capable surgeon to take the bullet out of my head. You know, he could have just told me, I'm a really good surgeon. I can take the bullet out of people's heads. Yeah. Oh, I believe you. You know, okay, great. <laughs> that's good to me. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> you know, another side of the uh, That's <laughs> all I need to know. So, you know, and I know everyone's different. So I, I really try not to to make a, you know, to, to, to make a, a, a pattern or a, you know, a system for anyone else. So I think for me, knowing me, who I am, how I think, you know, how... I've, I, how I roll, so to speak. I think you could have just came and told me from the jump, hey, Kyle, you, you've been created as a love being. This is who you are. You are loved unconditionally by your creator. Your creator has no problem with you. Your creator per- created you just as you are to live the life you're going to live. And you'll never have a problem with your creator. Your creator will never be have a problem with you. Now, as you go through this journey, learn yourself, learn how to love yourself unconditionally. And as you learn how to love yourself unconditionally, you'll love others in the same way. I think I could have heard that as a young boy and that would have resonated with me. That would have captured my imagination. I would have, you know, like I did with some other things because when I heard about 
faith, what I understood faith to be as a little boy, it fascinated me. I would, I love the stories of David and Goliath and Daniel in the lion's den. And my mom would read me these stories and I would be fascinated by them. And I wanted to be a faith person. So I think in the same vein, if you would have just told me, hey, Kyle, you're yeah. loved unconditionally by pure unconditional love. I mean, listen, and that's, that's so, listen, I was ready to sign up when you were explaining that. <laughs> I'm like, where do I sign? You, I, you know, this. That's that's beautiful, and and that but that's the simple that's the simple gospel to me. That's the yes. without all the other stuff attached to it. Without you know we we've got to sell this thing. We've got to right. get people through the door. We've got to save them. They're dying. They're going to hell. You know you take all that away, and it's what you just right. described. And uh, yeah, you know I I kind of I really see what you're saying there because man, if if when I was I'll tell you something. If someone would have said that to me, and I would have ended up in the right place. When I had my, because when I came uh, to look more seriously for God and and the bigger picture, uh, when I finally started to do that in my life, I ended up in a bad place. You know, me, you know, uh, organization. You know, like not a bad place mm-hmm. like me, but I went to a bad place, mm-hmm. thinking this was the place to go. But man, if if someone would have would have came and said what you just said, and I was in that place that same place where I was looking and I was seeking and I was ready to really jump in and change mm-hmm. and wanting to learn more about this inside life. It would have been pretty, pretty timely. It would have been great, I think. And it would have, yeah, it, it, yeah maybe that there, there's something to that, you know, it's not necessary, but if it does happen, you know, lemons, right. lemonade, you know, you got to right. make the best right. of it if it does happen. But right. you, I right. think you have a great exactly. point. You know, it doesn't, it, it doesn't need to be that way, you know? Right. Right. Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned that, Kyle, because that's something I've been asking some guests recently, too, is, you know, in the vein of like, what is someone's spiritual uh, or religious upbringing, like, can religious or spiritual teachings actually resonate with a child? Like, can you actually kind of understand mm-hmm. these generally pretty big concepts? Mm-hmm. And on cer- to a certain extent, it's like, ah, maybe not. But the way that you frame that, I think, makes perfect sense. Yeah, that it's it's through these kind of stories and uh, mm-hmm. you know in some instances myths or what have you what I, what I would co- consider to be representing very deep universal truths, but sort of yeah. packaged in a way that made sense to a kid. <laughs> and right. to that extent, I mean, whether it's uh, religious teachings that are being taught that are not so great, or just no discussion of any of that kind of thing at all, what a shame to not be bringing up children and young people to be bringing them up without that knowledge. And right. so we're all lost trying to figure out what's, what it all mean and what, who am I and what is it all for and whatnot. And yeah. it seems to me like if we did have that kind of teaching to a, a large group of young people, they would be on a better path to be more compassionate adults probably. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. yeah, that makes a lot yeah. of sense. Yeah, it's like saying you have all, you've already got it. You know, you just mm. got it. Mm-hmm. It's already there. It's already within you. You know, this is what I learned at the you know at the end of the the whole the whole mess and everything. You know, it, it's always been there. You know, it's one of the things yeah. I I say. I write a lot. You know, songs and stuff. And one of the lines I said in one was, uh, "You get set free, just to build your own mm. walls." So it's kind of mm. like you you know. You, you, you're free, you get this grace, and then they're like, you know, you're free. You, you be like, oh, this is the greatest thing in the world. And then they're like, okay, here. And they start handing you bricks. Here's one, you know, yeah. and now let's yeah. build build a wall because you ain't leaving here. Yeah. Wait a so minute. it's like, you know, and it, it's it's weird how that happens, you know. And they kind of, one of the things, um, that, and what do you think of this too? Because you, you've been in this, I mean, you were, you were a pastor. And I feel like it... You know how Jesus said to be childlike, you know, that, that that's that's the good thing to be like a child. Right. And they and when you come and when you're like that, they kind of look down on you like you don't really get it yet. And that's and that's such an opposite thing. You know, it's like, no, you getting it at the highest level when you yeah. just taking it simply, you're embracing the grace. You're, you're on this simple state of loving God, him, you know. A universe, whatever you you know, whatever it is, you're just in this oneness, and you're embracing that kind of thing. They come over and they're just like, 
I, this is the experience I've had. Like, all right, kid, you know, you know, wait till we we're we're gonna get to you. You know, they'll give you a year yeah. like that, maybe. You know, yeah, play play in play in the playground for a little while. We're gonna we're gonna put a suit on you soon, and we're, yeah. we're gonna we're yeah. gonna get you uh, lined up properly, yeah. and and we're gonna teach you what it really is to to be in this group. And uh, what what do you think of that? You know, um, that whole process and and. And what if we, I think it, it tunes up with what you're saying. You know, what if we just said, you got it. You know, what if yeah. there's not all this work to do? There's not, what if the yoke is really light? Yeah. What if the burden, what if, he, what if, what if what Jesus said is actually true? What, what yeah. if that, you know, I mean, how beautiful could that be? Right. You know, as, as you start to uh, move beyond the, the grace camp, and for me, it, it landed me. Well, the way I like to say it is, um, <clears throat> you know, I, I started off kind of, you know, in grace when I started breaking free. So, so, and then grace from there led me to unconditional love, which had been in church all my life and had never even thought about God being anything unconditional, uh, let alone love. So, you know, that was a, that was something new to me, but it, it was, it, it, captured me in every possible way. So when it was time to go further, grace, you know, grabbed me with one arm, unconditional love grabbed me with the other arm. And they, they started walking me into oneness and mm -hmm. said, here, let me introduce you oh, to man. oneness, where you come from, your source and, and what you really are. And th that was, you know, kind of, you know, brought me kind of full circle in a way. That's why I say it that way. Had I known this years ago and had a chance to develop this within me and that idea and that thought and that, that possibility that this is who I really am, you know, I could have really captured this lot, a lot sooner. And, you know, and I know there's a, a group of people, there's a camp of people that say, don't, 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 you know, regret where you came from or your beginnings. And maybe to a certain extent I don't, and maybe to a certain extent I do. Um, but I do think that there's there's a simplicity here that is missed. And I think it's missed because the more complicated it is, the, the more confusing it is and the more we think we need it. I heard someone say this about doctors and lawyers. The reason why doctors and lawyers go to mm. school primarily is to learn words we don't know so that they can convince you that you need them because they're gonna say words that you don't understand, especially if you go to court. And if you don't know these words, you're really screwed. But guess what? You can learn these words yourself. <laughs> Therefore you wouldn't need the doctors and the lawyers, you know, per se. And, and I, I heard that and thought, my God, isn't that religion? You know, yeah, uh, they, they created all of these, analogy. these, these, um, narratives, narratives you can't understand. And they made God to be, you know, seemingly very confusing. You, God is mysterious. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. You know, you, you can't, you can't question God. So they made God to be this great mystery. And so, you know, you kind of conditioned to believe that you need someone to help you understand because you just can't, because you're too far away from any type of ability to know it for yourself. And so that's how it got complicated. But like you're saying, Michael, if we, if we if we can just simplify this and look people in their eyes and tell them who they really are, I don't have any agenda by looking you in your eye and telling you that you are loved unconditionally by pure unconditional love and you are a divine being and there's nothing wrong with you. I have no agenda there because none of that has anything to serve me. It's all to help you. So you know, if we keep it that simple, then again, now these agendas are no longer there. And I don't have to keep telling you that you're not good enough and you're not doing enough and you need to come back next week so I can give you part two of this 15 steps to, you know, to, to righteousness and whatever. Um, and, and that's how this all got so complicated. And we've taken away that little childlike individual in everyone that still is alive, that is still there, that is waiting to, to be wowed with something that is so yeah. big, but so easy to understand. 
it's it's you know? so and that's, you're that's our so divinity real. it's so real because yeah. we for myself i can i can say part of my process of getting through you know the cult experience and everything i had to go back to my child you know i did therapy yeah. and when i mm-hmm. got to that guy that was good that then I, now we're having good times now it's yeah. like whoa man that guy that guy knew that guy that guy man that little mm-hmm. guy man and it, it's yeah. it's incredible how much uh we already know instinctively and yeah. can you just repeat because I really love that analogy. You, you sort of gave like an illustration of what was it? Grace held you by the hand, and, and yeah, and yeah. Was, can you repeat that, please? Because man, that was powerful. Yeah, the, the way I, the way I think it happened for me, Grace, as I started, you know, doing the whole Grace thing, and then Grace introduced me to in, unconditional love. So I was in the Grace camp, and the more I opened myself up to the ideal of this Grace. Unconditional love said, hey, let me tell you about me. You know, something had been in church all these years. And just like Grace, I'd never even considered God to be unconditional love. And then once I once I got my 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 arms around unconditional love, then Grace put one arm around me, unconditional love put another arm around me. And I was in the middle of the two and they kind of walked me into oneness and said, let me show you who you really are. And they said, that's, let me introduce you to right your there, to man. oneness. And once that happened, then thank you, Grace, for all you've done. Thank you, unconditional love, for all you've done. Now let me dive into this oneness. Let me see myself in it and let me see all of humanity in it as well. Man. Kyle, I'm sorry. You're going to get mad at me because I'm, I'm stealing that for a song. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. That's getting... I'll give you credit, whatever. That's getting stolen well, because you, I got I got you. a song I'm working on, and it's about consciousness and basically oneness. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm sorry, you know, forgive me. That's me. That's me. It, <laughs> give him a co-writer credit, I'll man. Give, yeah, I'll, give it, I'll give you. I'll, I'll give it to you, man. That's not a problem. But man, that, it might just be a line. But that line is that's you know why? Because man, that visual is it, man. For I, I man, I I feel like I lived that. And that's a yeah. beautiful way of describing it, man. It really is. It's beautiful because it, and then they take you into that oneness. Yeah. And that's the ultimate. That's, that's the real deal that that's like, now, now we're like, now we're getting, we're climbing up the mountain now. Right. Now right. we're going somewhere. Now we're like, okay. Yeah. I mean, now, yeah. we got to work on that one. We got to, we got to deal with that. How does that look? And how do we yeah. embrace that? Because we're so far from it as far right. as we're right on it because that's what 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 it really should be but we're far mm-hmm. from it because of the lawyers the doctors and because they messed <laughs> us up so much yeah. so we but we're really right there go ahead jump in derek i'm sorry i just had I, to i had to i had to st- give make sure he you know i at least told him i'm gonna, I'm gonna do that because that's wrong you know, you. just at least he could <laughs> do that <laughs> Well, I love what you said, Kyle. That like, um, it's like uh, we've talked about Mike and I before too. That like the great wisdom of the world is often very simple, and yeah. there's a thing called a cliche, which is this little diamond nugget of truth that people don't really, you know, because it's not really, and yet like treat others the way you want to be treated is a fundamental aspect of life. We we would be so much closer yeah. to utopia if we would just do there these little is. things. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And it is a hallmark of all these systems, mm-hmm. uh, be they religious, political, or otherwise, to confuse things. So it's yeah. not necessarily that we need to discover new stuff as much right. as we need to quiet down and hear the mm-hmm. things that are sort of innate to us. And right. yeah, again, it's a hallmark to make everything seem so confusing and, oh my gosh, the world is so crazy and oh, nothing makes any sense. When in fact these principles are quite inherent, they're quite simple, um, yeah. and 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 they're you know, inside of you. Um, so th- then, to, to I, I want to like bring it a little bit into um, because there's a difference between intellectually understanding these things and uh-huh. then like living a life where you act right. this way. So right. wh- what would you say to like because um, I do. I think uh, 
I very much believe we are all in this oneness together that we constantly impact one another in ways we don't even scientifically yeah. realize yet. Mm-hmm. Um, so what does the experience of oneness feel like to you? Do you mm-hmm. like notice times where you're still being, where you're not in oneness and then it, something pops up in your head and you go, oh yeah, no, wait, I have to, like how, how does one cultivate that feeling? Well, you know, my early beginning in church and the whole thing, by the time I was 19, I'd gone through it most of my life at that point, maybe from five to 19. So we started, I was about five years old. So by the time I was 19, I was ready to get on fire with God finally, finally stop straddling the fence, give God my everything. And uh, the only way I knew that, based upon the system I grew up in, the only way I knew that was to become a Pharisee, this judgmental, hardcore, the Bible says, we live this way, we do this. If you do these things, family members, friends of mine, whoever, I will join myself with you. If you don't do these things, if you don't live up to the standards that I hold dear to me, then I will shun you, I will treat you, I'll give you the cold, the coldest of shoulders, and I'll do that because that's what I'm supposed to do. I gotta toe the line, I've gotta, you know, keep that holy righteous stand. <clears throat> and so I lived that way and, and experienced life that way for a long time until I started embracing unconditional love. And it transformed me from this person who would judge everybody that wasn't like me and didn't do it the way I did it. And it, it allowed me to start, at least be, in the beginning, looking at people saying, highly beloved of the Father, just like me. Highly beloved of the Father, just like me. <clears throat> highly beloved of the Father, just like me. I don't see it, but it, it's, it's got to be true. <laughs> you know, kind of thing. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know really okay. struggling with some people, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> but that's kind of where it started, just 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 being determined to see everybody. And I live in a very urban town, so it's very easy to see people that are strung out on drugs, that are coming out of liquor stores at 10 a.m. in the morning, already purely drunk, streetwalkers, you know, drug dealers. It's very easy to drive in certain communities and you'll see it is there, you know. And I used to drive these streets and walk these streets and look at these people with great disgust. And then I, I said, no, I need to start highly beloved of the father, just like me, highly beloved of the father. So that's kind of how it started. And then I remember one day I went outside and, and maybe this sounds you know, like a cartoon or something, but one day I went outside and everything looked different. Everything. You know, it was like, it's like I was looking into the matrix or something and just, it all looked different. This, this one day. And I just saw everything as one. And I'm not saying that I, I perfected this now, you know, there's still some challenges here and there, you know, we just come, we just came through a very tough political moment. And, you know, it was, I I had to fight not to, to take sides or to, 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 to treat people based upon their beliefs. That's a fight sometimes. Sometimes I want to hold to my beliefs. And if you're different, I want to, you know, at least think about you differently. And so I had, to, I had to fight through those things sometimes to remember that we're all one and no one is their belief. You know, you, you strip away beliefs, you strip away all of these things that we've built up as monuments in our lives and you are me and I am you. That's what it is. And so um, it's a process, you know, and I'm hoping to keep going in this process to the point where nothing about anyone will ever offend me. And I can stay pure to what I really believe in the depths of me. And that is everyone is a divine being fully connected to source as one. This is who we all are. And it's becoming easier, although in the beginning it was very, very difficult. Yeah. Um, I love that's, a that, gr- that's a great answer, man. Yeah, man. That's, that's great. I, I um, think that, that's it, man. <laughs> what, what, a, what a moment... Uh, would you say that that day when you realize this oneness, like, 
were there things that kind of led up to that? Was that like a, a sort of specific day where something else happened? Was it yeah. like you felt no progress at all and then all of a sudden the doors broke open? Yeah. I have a, a dear friend here that I met on Facebook and we talk often. His name is Ken Etter. Um, he'd be a great guest, by the way. But um, <clears throat> he w- we were on the phone one day and he said, Kyle, there is a little verse in the Bible that most people know it and they don't understand how powerful it is. It may be the most powerful verse in the whole Bible. And uh, I think it's Deuteronomy 26 and 10 or 24 and 10, something like that, which is be still and know. Mm. And he said, if we really understood just how powerful that is, it would change everything. And so I was intrigued as he began to say, I've, I've been practicing getting quiet enough without thought. You know, maybe it's only 30 seconds, maybe it's only 45 seconds, but I'm up to about two minutes now where I can sit still enough with no thought. And I just wait till I hear what I need to hear. And that that intrigued me. That it really, really intrigued me. So I started to try to do that. So what this is what led me here. Um, I remember in those first year, in those first early moments a couple of years ago, I would be in that silence and I would start to hear things like, you are one with love. You are one with health. You are one with peace. You are one with, you know, wealth and these all these wonderful things. And it sounded really good. And I would just listen. And then a couple of days later, I'd hear it again. And so I, I, I started saying it while I was in that meditative state. And then I started hearing stuff like, you are one with spirit. And I thought, whoa, okay. The devil done got in here somehow and, you know, trying to ruin this party. <laughs> even, though I didn't, even though I don't believe in the devil, but, you know, my old religious programming tried to kick in. Now, that's the devil. You, you rebuke that because that ain't true, you know. <laughs> but I remember hearing that and I was too afraid the first time I heard it to dare mention it because I couldn't see it. That can't be possible. Right. The, the Holy Spirit is this thing outside of me that I need to ask to come inside of me. So I can't be one with it because I didn't I never had it until I asked it to come. Mm. But I, you know, a few days later, I, I kept hearing the same thing. You were one with spirit. And I finally got the courage to utter that. So I'm you're one with love. You're one with joy. You're one with peace. You're one with, you know, wealth. You're one with spirit. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm feeling really good. When I went along a little bit long, a little bit further down the road, and one day I hear you're one with God. And I'm like, I'm not saying that because God's going to kill me as soon as I say it. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. <laughs> It'll strike you down right there. I'm done. When I How say dare it. you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but again, I'm be still and know. So I'm, I'm still in that stillness. I'm, I'm, I'm practicing this, this daily. I'm practicing this daily and I'm in that stillness and I'm hearing it now louder. You are one with God. And I finally got the courage to say it, although it was in the faintest of whispers, I'm one with God. And I started looking around. (laughs) (laughs) Is it okay? (laughs) Is it okay? You know, it's it's funny how that stuff (laughs) hangs around, isn't it? Yeah. As you're growing growing out of it, how it just hangs around and and it's just, yeah, it's just there. Yeah. Like a bodyguard protecting the system. Yeah, exactly. You know? So that's what happened. And and eventually I got so comfortable with the ideal of being one with God. It just became an instinctive part of me. It just, I, I began to say it, you know, publicly. I began to write it publicly and it became easier and easier. And then it was shortly after that, that's when I walked outside that day and had that moment where I just saw everything as one. That is uh, quite a story, man. Yeah. And so, the, the this like time that you're being quiet and listening, that's mm-hmm. sort of like a meditation kind of thing. Right. Yeah, yeah. And um, do you still do that, by the way? I don't. I, I don't do it as much as I was at one point. Mm-hmm. I only I only did like five minutes intervals a day. Right. You know, because I didn't want to get anything close to that whole thing I used to do when I was trying to pray for hours at a time. So I, I was, I was not trying to get into nothing like that. I, I don't want, I don't want anything that looks structured, uh, none of that. So you lose me as soon as you tell me what I have to do. Okay. Well, 
I'm out. Right. <laughs> you know, I'm, not, I'm not gonna do that. Yeah, I'm, so I'm not doing any of that. I, so. I have uh, some suspicions, but where do you think? Or I rather, I have some some possible answers that I think. But where do you think those messages were coming from? Yeah, inside, inside of me, my 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 internal being, that has always been here. That is, that's eternal. Um, you know, I didn't become me when I was pushed out of the birth canal. I've always been. I just started my my experience here when I came through the channel. I knew this. It was it was part of me. You know, I, I of course, you know, you get into this natural system of the world and uh, humanity. So you, you got to learn these things. But instinctively inside of me, I've always known. And it was just a matter of time. Like I know it is for every single human being ever. It's just a matter of time before you yourself will know it too. It might happen in this journey. It might happen in the next journey. It might happen in journeys after that. I don't know. But you will know because you cannot not know. You do know. Let me say it this way. You actually do know. Just that there's some, you know, things perhaps in your thoughts or experiences that is preventing you from seeing it. And I remember another one of those moments that really helped me was in one of those meditative moments. Um, I heard this. See that I've already given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. Now, I knew that verse in Peter, you know, God has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. But what I heard was see. And it was so profound. It was saying to me, Kyle, you need to see it. Mm. That's all you need to do. You need to see it, that you already have it. That's it. And that was another one of those moments. It was transformative. And when I looked inside of myself and saw myself as divine, when I looked inside of myself and saw myself as a unconditionally loved being, who loves unconditionally. When I looked inside and saw that inside of me is unconditional love without judgment, when I saw it for the first time, whoa, I'm, I can do that? Okay, then it's time for me to start to be that. So that's the key. We just have to see it, or some people call it a knowing. But once you know it, you know it. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. Mm. Yeah, it's that's uh I think that's so fascinating. I think that's so uh deeply deeply true. Yeah. Um I just I just finished reading a book called The Seth Material that was recommended to us by uh David DeAndre. And it was a book this lady Jane Roberts uh it was like channeled. She had this sort of uh, I don't I don't know if you're familiar but uh so one of the things that this spirit Seth recommended was basically what you are describing what he called like psychological time which was sitting down becoming quiet and one of the things he just, just, just talks about in there is this your sort of inner self which right. is beneath your subconscious basically it talks about mm -hmm. like your outer self being your kind of ego and you're interacting with the right. world but there's a very very deep portion of you that if mm -hmm. you can quiet your mind to the extent that you can kind of connect with the inner self, the inner self being the one, that, by the way, that feeds your outer self and basically creates your whole reality in terms of your desire systems and all that kind of stuff. Right. And so I, what I think is what you are describing there is uh, you have trained or, or managed to uh, get in touch with that deep inner self, which of course mm -hmm. contains all the universe of the, all the knowledge of the universe. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, this is the, the Trump or Impetrate quote, Mike, that um, with regard to spirituality, it's best never to start. Oh, yeah. But <laughs> if, if you do start, it is best to finish. Like once you hear that, you can't put the lid back on it. Yeah. Right. Um, and so you can't help but start to kind of like slowly consider that more and more and more but that is so fascinating kyle that you experienced that man um yeah that, that is like uh, very very inspiring and so have you like recommended doing that kind of thing to other people or do you think that's like uh pretty specific to your path yeah i, I do recommend it but I, I try to be very careful in recommending it because i don't want it to sound like it's a formula 
Yes. Right? So because we've been there, right? Formulas don't work. So someone gets in church and they start to preach about, I, 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 I prayed for an hour and, and, and the Lord showed up and, and filled my room with smoke and the Holy. And so you hear that in a congregation, someone like me, I'm going to go home and see if I can, if I can do the same thing. And I pray for an hour and, and it didn't happen. So I come back the next day, pray for another hour. It didn't happen. And I keep trying to do it until I get there. Then I think when it doesn't happen, something must be wrong with me. You know, so now I got to I got to unbox that whole thing one day. So I, I try not to, you know, I, I do think it is the key for us all to, to find that stillness, to get still enough to hear what you haven't been hearing internally. I think that is the key. Now, how it looks and how it how it you know works out for everyone or plays out for everyone, that, that could be entirely different. Um, I do it with music, believe it or not. I need music playing. I need some soft meditative mo- music instrumentals playing in the background. If not, I'm bored, you know? And I can only do it for two or three to five minutes. That's it. As soon as I hear what I need to hear, I, I'm up, I'm done, you know? So. I got it. <laughs> yeah. You know, I've heard people like Dr. Joe Dispenza and other people in that vein say, you know, they do it for hours at a time. I can't do that. I can't, you know, if that's what it takes, then I, I can't do it, you know? So it's for each one of us is different. And it, it may you know, be determined by how much chatter is going on in, in our subconscious and consciousness. That could be the key to it. I don't know. Um, but I know when I heard Ken tell me that, it intrigued me enough to say, let's see if we can do that. Let's see if we can get quiet enough to hear something you haven't heard before. So I was ready also. That was a big part of it. I was ready. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah that's uh, one of the things I it's kind of uh, almost frustrating about a spiritual path is that it's so hyper individualized. Right, and absolutely. so it always makes me laugh when people are constantly writing self-help books about, yeah. you know, dieting books and stuff and all this kind of stuff. And it's like, it's pretty egotistical to yeah. assume like this worked for me. So it will work yeah. in exactly the same right. way for step every one, single person. Step two, step three, <laughs> step four. Just, go, just 10 easy steps and you'll be a millionaire. There you go. I mean, Check the boxes. I, yeah, I wish it were that easy. <laughs> right. um, but yeah. I, I, you know, that's kind of frustrating to me that, uh, you know, everybody claims to have the answers. And yeah. it's one of the uh, ineffable things about existence, about it's the yin-yang yeah. of the universe is that the only answers that you really, really need are inside yourself. And there might be people yeah. like you're saying, Ken, uh, there, I think Mike has helped me a lot. Like there are little people who can give you little pointers along the way or things that even like mm-hmm. you said, like just right. intrigue you. And it's like, Hmm, mm-hmm. yeah. but ultimately you have to do that work yourself in yeah. the context and in the manner in which is made available to you at this moment, which right on one hand is maddening because it's like, I just want to read a book and at the end of the book, I'll be good, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but now this goes back to what we were saying earlier that it, it's it, the other side of that is it's kind of a relief that you don't have to read 10,000 books or you don't need right. to have $10 million. Right. It all is all in here. Yeah. Um, it's just, uh, I suppose, yeah, taking the time and, and, you, and being in the right place to listen. You know, I think, I think that this kind of jumps, well, connects, I should say, with the the idea of the systems that we were talking about earlier, a little right. bit because if if you kind of if you if you kind of like unpack it in that way, where you know for a system to work, they need to give you the instructions, you need to follow them as as far as the systems we that we use, let's say, right. and if and like you said, you kind of you mess you mess up the whole game. Once you once you get on that grace thing, and you yeah. tell people to go inside, and then because I've been thinking about this a lot lately, and I and I I'm completely on board with what you're saying, Kyle. I think that we're all unique, just like everyone else, yeah. and our path is completely unique, right? And we can only play parts in. Mm-hmm everyone else's path sort of like unknowingly you know not intentionally by just 
doing what we need to do for ourselves and sharing that, I feel like it right. sends out sort of like little pieces to, to ponder and then to put together creatively because we're so creative and so unique. <laughs> and and, and th- let's just think about that, you know, that it's actually beautiful if you think about it, that our story, our, our whole story, if we can really get in there and unpack our story story is just our story. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's not, it's not 10 steps. It's not that my right. 10 steps may, it may not even be 10 steps for me. It, it may be bumping into trees in the forest for 15 years, hitting my head. And then, and then some, some guy throws a rock at my right foot. And then after that, I get it. And that's it. Yeah. You know, it could, it could be, you know, and, and I think, <laughs> That to to give people that liberty and support and just by loving them, I feel like mm-hmm. they would find it. Yeah. Just to if you can make a person believe that what what we're kind of saying is true, I think that's step one. You know, in 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 how yeah. to go about it. You know, like you you can. It's in you. Like you don't have to worry. You yeah. don't have to be brilliant. You don't have to be. You don't have to read a bunch of books, like like Derek said. You don't have to get ten million bucks. You got right. it. You, right. but but isn't it kind of incredible how hard to believe that yeah. is when you when you're completely racked up in the system, like when you're completely yeah. a system when when you're a complete system guy, whether it's church system, money system, whatever system. When you're completely a system guy. And someone comes along with this stuff, it's kind of like, <laughs> hold on a second. Does not yeah. compute, does not compute. And um, I think that's, you know, I don't know. I've just been thinking about that a lot lately. And I, I think it really hits on on what you're talking about. And, and uh, I love it yeah. because it's very freeing. It's very light. It's yeah. it's the easy yoke. It's just it's just wonderful, you know. And, and um, gosh, if we could go on that path, you know, like... <laughs> more and more and more and 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 uh but but even that you know i you know maybe that that's that's a part of it too you know yeah not everyone going on it some being here right. some being there these you know alan watts kind of speaks of that a lot and, and and uh derek and i are big alan watts fans and and he talks about yeah. kind of the, the necessariness of two sides of it of this one pushing here of you being this uh-huh. and us being you know and how it all kind of works together yeah. and we're one so we're one right. and we're all doing our part and this happens to be my part this happens to be your part and I think that also plays into the the love the unconditionalness yeah. and the mm-hmm. embracing of like you said even even uh, what we tend to polarize in, you know in popular culture uh, even embracing that like okay you're a part of me yeah. Like, and how could you really do something if, if you really, and you know, it's a wonderful message because if you really embrace that message, how could you really do something really malicious to someone if you really right. embrace that message? And when I, when I look at, at you or Derek, I'm looking at me, let's say, like, what if right. I got it to that level? Right. Then I right. provide, exactly. that'd be really hard for me to do something. <clears throat> to hurt anyone even even on a low level even like on a little slight right. or or if you really believe that that that's me right that we're in you know and i think that's everything you know for me I, i'm i'm really i agree with you i'm st- i'm still stuck on that you know the 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 grace <laughs> got me over here it's it's very poetic man i'm writing songs in my head right now thank you <laughs> it's wonderful it's it's wonderful yeah. Well, I, I wonder, Kyle, like how you feel about this current moment in the world and then how you feel about uh, the future, because I think that one of the reasons why Mike and I started the show was because in America, in many cases, they, we've kind of gotten rid of religion and it's uh, ostensibly been replaced by like this worship of material things. And the sort of like hedonism of like the 60s and 70s has kind of gone on. And now, you know, everybody's got computers and, and they're sitting at home all the time. And 
I part of me kind of feels like we have come close to, I mean, this is, this is optimistic, but I, I would say we've come close to the end of the line with regard to being like uh, egotistical, um, materially obsessed. And we've seen that that is also leaves you pretty empty. And so I would like to believe there will be some sort of like reflex back to asking for something more, a certain contentedness, that would lead to more people walking a little bit further down a spiritual path, or at least uh, seeking yeah. spiritually. Do you think mm -hmm. that is possible or likely? Do you think the world today is as, do you think the world is sort of in like a static, messed up state, like everybody always thinks it's the worst possible time to be alive? Um, <laughs> with the Watts, like you need to have positive and negative. Uh, how, how do you feel about that? Are you optimistic about a spiritual future? Oh yeah, yeah. I'm in, I'm incredibly optimistic. I, I, I'm, I get you know maybe a little overwhelmingly giddy when I think about it because this is what I see. I don't see us getting worse. I, I don't. I don't. I can't. I don't see us getting worse. I've never seen us being worse. I can take history. I can take points in history, facts in history, the way we've treated others in the past compared to how we treat others today. Segments of humanity. There was a day, not too long ago, a husband can beat his wife and no one can do anything about it. That day wasn't too long ago. There was a day you can beat your children and no one can do anything about it. You can beat them mercilessly, without mercy, you abuse them, and no one can do anything about that. There was a day working conditions were deplorable, you know, and, and I understand there's still some challenges we're facing. You know, there was a day where we enslaved one another. There was a day, there was a day where you could not openly talk about your sexuality without being, you know, really, really ostracized and rejected from the communities. There was a day, you know, but we're not there today. And I'm so incredibly optimistic because what I see is we are on a rapid ascension into this higher consciousness, humanity as a whole. And we're looking back at some of these lower consciousnesses or lower vibrations that don't serve us. We're looking down back at them and saying, you don't serve me. I don't want you anymore because I've seen better. I've experienced better. I've felt better. It feels good to love people. It really does. It feels good to look at each other with no malice in your heart because malice and hatred and bitterness, those are very hard emotions to carry. They take work. They take a lot of energy. Loving is natural. You know, being good and kind, that's really natural. And I see that we're ascending into this higher consciousness and we're understanding just what it's really all about. And I think this ascension is happening quicker than it's ever happened before in, in our time as humans. And I think that uh, it's going to continue. And it, it probably won't be much longer before we have this global awakening and things will really begin to shift towards our oneness and we'll see it and we'll live in it. Now, I don't know if things are cycles and they're ages and things of that nature. Maybe it'll just be for an age or a cycle or you know, I don't know how long, but I, 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 I see it, and 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 I'm so encouraged and motivated by it, and I'm, I, I won't believe anything else. I, I refuse to believe anything else. Then we're gonna do just that. Um, wow! Thank I'm you for say, that. Yeah, Tom. thanks for saying. Because you know what, I'm usually <laughs> on the other side of it, and and I'm like like Derek said, you know, and and but you know what. I I want to be more on the side you're talking about, but my 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 you know I guess my tendency is to just kind of like feel like everything is uh you know that there's always these certain factors, but I want to think more about what you said, so thank you for that. I want to think more about it because one thing I do know is once you put on a lens, you tend to see more of that. And uh, if you don't wear the lens at all, you're not going to see it, you know. So, and and uh, it, it's listen. <laughs> one of the 
one thing I do that I did learn in the cult is you can I can be programmed because I was. Yeah. And that also taught me another powerful thing that if I can be programmed, I can program myself. Yeah. Which is wonderful, which means that, you know, I can take something that I th- that may even go against w- what I kind of think and I can embrace it and work on that. Because I know it's a lighter load and it's a better, more happy, joyful way to live and look at things. Yeah. You know? So thank you for that because um, I'm usually on the other end of that. That's for damn sure. <laughs> right, Derek? I, Derek I, can I, co-sign it. <laughs> He's been there. And I think <laughs> it's such an important moment to say something like that, Kyle, because we're coming out of or maybe still in the middle of this pandemic and everybody's stuck at home. It's been a very um, individual kind of a lonely time for a lot of folks and a lot of economic hardship as well. Um, So, and of course, you know, the television has us convinced that the world is going to end at any moment, (laughs) you know, that's the worst time. And there, there is a a nugget of truth to the fact that I think whenever people are alive, they feel like it's the craziest time. So add that into there, add on top of very strong systems that constantly want to confuse you and, and make you all upset. And yet, all of those things you said are objectively true. Yeah, that, that that's what, that's why I liked it. Yeah, <laughs> that's we, like, we are yeah, able to true. we are able to consider ourselves and each other in a way that we appear to have never been able to uh, right. in the in the history of our species. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I love that you said that it actually seems like we're in some ways accelerating toward this yeah. oneness kind of feeling. Because, um, yeah, like life between the 1500s and the 1600s didn't really appear to like change that much. You know, people right. were riding horses in the 1500s. They were right. still riding horses in the 1600s. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but now, I mean, things change. They appear to be changing faster and faster. Yeah. And there are yeah. aspects of that that are not so great. But what's most important and most uh, what has the most power is how we think of one another. And yeah. I would really, I, I do agree with you, and I would like to believe that we are not far away from the day when we realize that I myself have so much more in common with regular middle-class folks in uh, any country on the planet um, yeah. than I do with uh, some king somewhere or something like that. Yeah, And that people... Uh, yeah, that that that's a very optimistic um, way to look at things, and I, I think it's it's also where we're headed to. Yeah, um, and and like uh, I I also like that you you answered so quickly. <laughs> you were like, well, I'm, you know, I don't know. Like it was very inspiring to me that you were like, oh, absolutely. Like, that, and, and I'm I'm very excited. And uh, man, I needed to hear that. I, I really did. Um, because uh, yeah, I'm it's, it's a convincing case. Yeah. I agree. Mm-hmm. I agree. Um, well, listen, Mike, do you want to try and wrap things up here a little bit? Um, yeah, I, I think. I think uh, you... Let me let me just ask you this: mm-hmm. Like, what do you what are you up to nowadays? So you you've left being a pastor, <sighs> right? You don't do that right. anymore. Was no. that a, a difficult divorce, by the way? <laughs> I'm using divorce it was unexpected. There. Were it people was unexpected. like very? Were you very shunned? Were you people very upset with you? Well, it happened organically, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, hmm. the, we were sharing a space to, for worship. The town I live in, it's it's very tough to get places to worship. <clears throat> so it's a very populated, you know, well, yeah, you guys are, you know, Brooklyn and Yonkers. So, you know, could you imagine trying to find a place to worship in Brooklyn? You know, you either have to share a place or find a storefront or, you know, it's very difficult. So the place we were using to, to do our worship services, um, you know, we couldn't use that place anymore. And... I, I had fully expected God to open up another door of, you know, to lead us to another place. And I kept waiting and waiting and waiting. And about two years after that, since our last service, I remember hearing one day, the name of our church was New Beginning Ministries. And I remember hearing, I woke up, eyes popped wide open. The first thing I heard was New Beginning Ministries is no more. 
Well, at that point, I well, we hadn't done it in about two years. I guess I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> now, <clears throat> if someone had come to me two years earlier and said, you're no longer going to be a pastor, you're no longer going to have a church, I don't think I would have been able to embrace that, although I never wanted to be a pastor, you know, but I had been so convinced that I had no choice. I've been so convinced that this was God's plan. This was God's will for my life. And I had better follow it or else. I was so convinced that this was the only way I could ever prosper. This was the only way I would ever advance through life is if I did this. And although I probably deep down inside would have welcomed someone coming, telling me God doesn't want me to do this anymore. I don't think I would have been able to accept it or embrace it because of the deep, deep indoctrination that I had about it. So it took that time of being away from it, kind of outside of my own doing. And then when the time was right, I heard what I needed to hear and I knew that that time was over. And I don't think I'll ever pastor again, but if I do, I do say this, if I do, it'll be vastly different than anything like I've ever done before. Number one, we might only have church one, 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 once a month for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, set your you own hours. <laughs> yeah, you are coming for an hour once a month, you know, you know, that might be it for the whole month. Mm. Um, you know, when I look back on the and, and no no disrespect to any church that's doing it today, no pastors, no disrespect to any of you, but when I look back on it to me, it's just a bunch of time that's could be spent better doing different things. Um, so well, I uh, I look forward to that, Kyle. If you if you start it back up again, let me know because yeah, once a month I can do that. I can be there once a month. <laughs> I can for an hour. For an hour. For an hour. Swing it's it perfect. Too. You it's got perfect. Me too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, well, of course, to all our listeners, make sure you go and check out Grace Line. That's Kyle's show with Lynn. Um, Kyle, I had so much fun here. Um, yeah, you're too. such a fascinating yeah. person to talk Same to. Here. And. Uh, yeah, you'll have to come back because I, I swear we still have so many questions. Uh, anytime. Yeah, you got to come back, Kyle. We got to get you on here every once in a while, man. It just, anytime. Great conversation. Anytime. Thank yeah, you. Anytime. Anytime. Thank you guys for having me. And again, I apologize to your followers and your listeners who were you know, looking for me to uh, come on last time and you know, just, just that they got away from me. So uh, I made sure today that I was, you know, I cleared my schedule early enough to make sure there was going to be nothing that was going to stop me from getting here today. So, <laughs> Well, thank you for that, good sir. Um, all right, guys. Yeah, this is uh, Mike and I will be back Sunday morning. Make yeah. sure you check out Graceline. Um, uh, when do you guys go on, Kyle? Yeah. Uh, Monday okay. nights, uh, Eastern Standard Time, 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time on Monday nights. Okay. So, um, you know, just go find me on Facebook. Or if you go to my website, kylelbutler.com. KyleLButler.com and all the links are there. Facebook, okay, Twitter, yada, yada, yada. So just click that link. You'll go right to my page and uh, you can follow me or send a friend request, whichever you like. And then you'll, you know, you'll be able to jump on our show and, and kind of see me and Lynn act crazy. So. Yeah, definitely. Listen, I highly <laughs> recommend their show. I watch it once in a while and uh, they're, they're, they're funny. They're truthful. They're, it's, uh, it's a good show. I, I love watching it. So definitely check them out. 